And I'm Ryan. And uh, we are going to be having a great show today. What are we talking about today, Ryan? Well, uh, we've got some news about China and the Great Firewall and China's internet, quote unquote. Uh, We've got a piece about uh, Krita and some ransomware that was targeted towards content creators. And then we've got a uh, piece about some reverse engineered game code for uh, GTA 3 that has been taken off of GitHub and then put back on GitHub and the controversy around that. And then uh, we're going to talk about Vivaldi um, becoming the default browser on Monjero Linux, uh, Cinnamon Edition. And then finally, uh, because I work for the, with the Thunderbird team, I'm going to share a little bit of news about what we're doing over there. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, cool. If you guys uh, like the show, make sure that you like follow the RSS feed or head over to any of your favorite places. We, we're even on YouTube. Uh, follow us on there because the show's every week coming at you for the rest of the of time. Here we go. Uh, sounds good so uh the first story on on the docket today my friend we're talking about um how china wants the internet to become more civilized by always reflecting marxist values um what is this about exactly well my first question is is it china or is it china china i've heard i've heard it both ways yeah i i think it could go Uh, either way (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, as as uh, I'm sure our audience, because uh, we have a lot of smart people in our audience who are up with this stuff, knows China has kind of its own Internet, um, not just kind of uh, via the Great Firewall and in a lot of ways in which they've architected their networks. Uh, they have a lot of control over the Internet. And they have sensors who uh, t- take content off of uh the Chinese internet uh, that doesn't fit with the state's ideals for what should be on there. And uh, apparently they are trying to make the internet more quote unquote civilized by um, removing content that doesn't reflect Marxist values. And mm. I put, I put quotes around those, but they're not, they're not putting quotes around those. Like they're, they legitimately, <laughs> Are right. serious about basically it. you have to toe the party line if you're going to post anything on the internet right. in china which you know th- that sounds like a good a, a good thing to do right you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think like first off um so i i listened to a, a whole series on the great firewall i think it was last year and um it was both amazing like as a technical uh feat yeah. what they were able to build. But it was also really sad because it actually was a bunch of Western companies helping China build the Great Firewall back whenever they started building it in what I think it was like the nineties or something. Yeah. And and so that ultimately like now they have this amazingly complex infrastructure that they're actually able to really control uh at a significant level what uh, their citizen C on the internet. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the, f- that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane how, how much they're able to censor, you know, what people, what people see and, and what people see is what exposes them to like new ideas and new ways of thinking about things. And so I think this is just a, you know, further, cracking down on what what kind of expression can happen on china's internet and uh yeah i really i don't love this at all no. um i know that like from my own experience although i won't say where but i'm sure people can figure it out uh you know even companies that operate in china to any degree you always have to be really careful about what kind of products you even you know, ex, uh, expose people to, right. you know, in China. And, uh, and it's, it's the shame. It's a shame because, you know, 
Well, it's, it, a, it's curious to me, right? Because it's like you have so many companies, you know, Western companies that are like, oh, we, we got to get into the Chinese market. We got to get into the Chinese market. And they're willing to do all this stuff and jump through all these hoops like, you know, Disney. They're willing to, like, change major parts of their movies, censor themselves yeah. uh, for to, to, to get into the Chinese market. And, and then you look at something like Tencent. Where, you know, I, I think it was two weeks ago, China started just cracking down on Tencent and starting to, like, take parts of Tencent and nationalize them because they didn't like yeah. how Tencent, like, was being operated. And it's like these companies are so focused on getting into the Chinese market and, like, getting access to all the these Chinese consumers. And they're not even thinking about, like, the implications of subjugating themselves to the fickle whims of an authoritarian government. And it's like, yeah. I don't understand how they could not see this unless they just don't care. Um, yeah. the, the thing that's, like, really crazy to me, too, is, like, this, uh, the report that was on, like, a bunch of different uh, state-sponsored websites um, sp- basically says that they're constructing a new uh, censorship mechanism that's meant to bury rumors. It's called the uh, China Internet Joint Rumor Refusal pl- Platform. Uh, and it's basically a uh, it's a fact-checking service that is meant to offer alternative facts. Um, oh, my gosh. It's insane. Like, I don't understand how people could can put up with this. Like, I, I dude, I don't get it. It's, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I mean, honestly, the people don't. I mean, there's no. the, the problem, and when they don't, they they end up in a you know in a black bag. Um, right. And that's that's unfortunate, but that is the reality. Um, although you know you have these really interesting stories where the uh, lots of Chinese people will find ways around the censorship, like they'll they'll use alternative words. Yeah. You know, for instead of like whatever the word that's being censored is in right. order to try and like and calling, share this stuff. Like calling Xi Jinping Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And but so, this is th- uh, this this whole initiative is even meant like meant to crack down on the use of internet slang. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ultimately I think that it's a double edged sword. And and I don't know if it'll actually come back to uh, hurt China, uh, the Chinese government, yeah. in any way. But I feel like I feel like there's always kind of a trade off you make when you try and censor freedom of expression, and uh, and the trade off that is made is in in the terms of creativity and innovation. And so, you know, they, China, and we'll go into geopolitics only for a second, (laughs) but China wants to be the preeminent power in the world. They want to be the, the, you know, most, the biggest economy in the world, which they probably will end up being in some, in some way. But, but ultimately like creativity and innovation is born in a environment of uh, free expression. Yeah. And so. I think ultimately each step they take like this does have its risks to their ability to uh, really be, become a premier uh, economy in the world, to become a premier, a place where people want to do business. And and uh, and you see like, you know, Google pulled out a while back because of because of multiple things, censorship and forced technology transfers. But I think even their talent inside the country, uh, if, if you're really a top tier, what what is it? Developer, um, entrepreneur, et cetera, you're gonna think twice, you know, about about sticking around or, you, you know, and you might consider going somewhere else to start your company or build your build your software because because of you know the the environment uh, no and so uh, i i'm i'm always watching this uh, th- this is actually my one of my unhealthy like <laughs> obsessions is is uh reading about totalitarian governments 
mm. and authoritarian governments. Yeah. And uh, I've been watching this uh, for for a few years, and uh, and uh, I'm curious to see if they can continue their their pace of like growth when they continue to to crack down. Uh, yeah, especially on technology companies lately. But yeah. we'll see. I, I think that there's like, I mean, like you said, there's a trade-off. I think that might not be the right word, though. I think, like, there's only so much that, that um, Beijing can kind of crack down on free expression until, like, people revolt from it, you know? Like, uh, for example, like... Um, like Winnie the Pooh, for example, they they banned Winnie the Pooh, for God's sakes. It's like that that's going to happen every single day. Like these these censorship this censorship initiative, it, people are going to try and get around it, and and like everything is going to get banned. Like you're not going to be able to use certain characters. Like you can't even like uh, use you can't even talk about alpacas anymore in in China because. Uh, they, they were uh, being, the, the, the word for alpaca in Chinese was being used to make subversive puns. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, here's the deal too. Like, uh, okay. So with the, with the great firewall and, and like the censorship of the internet, you know, ultimately what ends up happening, uh, I've heard this a couple times from people who have lived in China, uh, is a person will uh, a Chinese person will want to access some form of content. They'll use a VPN or some some way to get around the Great Firewall and censorship, be exposed to a lot that they haven't been exposed to otherwise, and then then you then that it actually yeah it has this blowback because they begin to be like okay well like why is this censored you know and. And once you open that door, it's kind of like, like, uh, I don't know. It's kind of like people who have been in, you know, a cult or whatever. You start to question a lot of, a lot of things. And, yeah. uh, and then it kind of, I don't know, it, 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 it breaks trust in your government institutions. And yeah. I think that this is where ultimately like this type of censorship, I think, I don't know. I don't know if it'll have an, if this effect over the next ten years, but ultimately, this type of thing collapses on itself. Yeah. Unless they develop like a totalitarian AI that runs a robot army and then subjugates all <laughs> humanity. Yeah. Or or they collaborate with uh, Facebook and make Ray Ban sunglasses, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, Ray Ray Ban sunglasses that turn you into the Borg. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I want to know what you guys think out in the audience here. What do you think about this story? Uh, have you read any of the uh, information coming out of China on this? Let us know. Hit us up. Uh, send us an email. Show at offtopical.net. Also, um, talking about the Facebook stuff, just a very brief side. Yeah. Off topic. Yeah. <laughs> I watched your video. Yeah. And, uh, man, you, you got me. Like, you got me. That video got me. I in, in what way? If it 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 just like something about it like hit hit my feels you oh, know okay cool it hit me in the feels <laughs> i uh, i actually uh i saved the video and i i intended to and i still intend to send it to a few people nice. because uh that was just a awesome if it for the audience if you haven't watched um gardner's uh facebook uh what is the video called do you know uh Off i've changed the name a couple times it's uh facebook sunglasses reveal a dangerous ambition yeah if you guys haven't watched that, go over and watch it. It's uh, it actually made me think like you should be doing like a, uh, uh, like almost like privacy documentary on YouTube, uh, dude. Um, because it's like that was actually legitimately like I could have watched that content for another forty minutes, you know. Yeah. And uh, and I feel like it was just really well done. So Thank I'm you. just telling the audience. If you haven't seen it, go watch that video. It's just, uh, it just lays out kind of what, I feel like it lays out the argument for why we need to just reject Facebook at this point. Yeah. That as the company is being run right now, like it's just, it's just not a company that respects its users. 
and I'm not going to buy your shitty sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I do have to apologize, Ryan, because I wasn't, I, I hit you in the feels and I was aiming for your face. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, now I'm going to spread, I'm going to spread that feel video all over the place. So. Nice.